so thankful to uh, our dear uh, i mean uh, evangelist andrew joseph uh, being with us and joining with us in this zoom meeting and preaching the word of god so today let, let us all i mean listen to the word of god uh, from evangelist andrew joseph let us all sit in the presence of god with a thankful attitude and put our hands together and welcome uh, brother andrew praise god praise the lord is the sound and everything okay? Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. Greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is coming soon. Uh, as uh, Pastor mentioned, uh, it is uh, unexpected uh, for everyone uh, that I would be ministering in front of you today. But in the sight of God, there is no uh, surprises. There is no coincidence. So I truly believe uh, that with the way uh, the situation played out. Uh, definitely, there is a plan of God behind uh, all of this. So I want to thank uh, Pastor Savakuti Matthew for giving me this opportunity to minister the Word of God, as well as all the believers in uh, Eternal Life Church of God. May God bless you all abundantly, and may His uh, Word speak to us this morning. Um, Again, uh, I was told about this uh, in the while I was in the middle of my our church in Delaware service. Uh, I was told about this, so I've been spending some time in prayer uh, this afternoon, asking God uh, what to speak to your church about, and the Spirit of God gave me uh, a prompting to speak to you from a particular passage, and uh, so uh, I just want to share what the Lord put in my heart. And uh, let's all remain in a prayerful attitude. Let's turn our attention to the book of Hosea, chapter number 2, verse 14 and 15. Book of Hosea, chapter number 2, verse 14 and 15. It reads like this, Therefore, behold, I will allure her, and will bring her into the wilderness, and speak comfort to her. I will give her vineyards from there, and the valley of Achor as a door of hope. She shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the days when she came up from the land of Egypt. This morning, the word that I feel led in my spirit to share with you all is uh, the God of the wilderness. The God of the wilderness. Uh, when we study the Old Testament, uh, there are different uh, ways that we can uh, interpret this Old Testament scripture. One is uh, what we call a historical interpretation, which means uh, this message uh, that God is speaking through Hosea the prophet is for the people of Israel who lived back in that time. And so when we look with that interpretation, that means this is already a completed or a fulfilled prophecy. When the people of Israel came back from exile and God restored them, uh, we, see, you can, we can see that God fulfilled his prophetic word through that, through that, uh, through that situation. So in, in the historical interpretation, this is already a fulfilled prophecy or a fulfilled promise. Another interpretation that gets a little bit more interesting to study is what we call a futuristic interpretation or eschatological interpretation, which means I, I interpreted, uh, this is a message for the end time. So many people believe that uh, this passage is talking about the nation of Israel, the current day nation of Israel, and things that will happen uh, in the last days. So there is that way of also looking at the Old Testament scripture. But both these uh, interpretations uh, really doesn't benefit us as uh, New Testament believers because uh, what happened in the past is not really affecting us. And what is going to happen in the end times during the time of Antichrist is also not going to affect us because we will be gone before then. So how do we study this Old Testament uh, scripture 
when we are living in this day and age. So there is a, another way we can interpret the Old Testament scripture, which is what we call uh, an, alleg uh, an, an allegorical interpretation or spiritualistic interpretation, which basically means that this is applicable to the New Testament church or the New Testament Israel. So you might ask, uh, which, which of these three interpretations is co the correct interpretation? There's a lot of arguments in, from theological scholars about that. I believe all three are correct. Amen. Praise God. That's one of the unique things about the Word of God. Word of God is not like any other ordinary book. The Word of God has the ability to speak to all men, those who lived before us, those of us who are living today, and those of us who are living in the, who are going to live in the future. So I believe all three are correct, but for today's message, we are going to look at this Old Testament scripture from a spiritual perspective, from a spiritual perspective. So, this is a message that God is speaking to the nation of Israel. And God is saying, <coughs> he starts off that chapter 2 there by saying uh, that the Israelites have sinned, turned away from God. And then God says one thing, uh, very, very interesting there, verse number 6 of chapter 2, he says, I am going to hedge up her ways with thorns and wall her in so she cannot find her path. This is Hosea chapter number 2, verse 6. So God is telling first, I'm going to close the way in front of the nation. I'm going to close the way in front of my people. So this is an ironic statement for us because we are what? We always say what? God opens new ways for us, right? Especially at this year is coming to an end. We are praying and asking God what? God open a new way for us. Open a new door for us, right? And that is good. That is something God can do. But this morning, the word of God wants to remind us that our God is not only a God who opens ways for us. There are times in our life when he will also close the way in front of us. Praise God. He closes the way in front of us. He blocks our way in front of us. Why does he do that? Uh, because God wants to redirect us back to his perfect will. Many a times when we live our life, we live life based on how we want to. We do our busy schedule and working throughout the week and the school and studies and we continue in this mountainous routine. But uh, God is more concerned about his will being fulfilled in our life. And so what God will do sometimes is, especially when we are going off track, especially when we are going away from the will of God there are certain times God will block us to redirect us back to the correct path amen I mean oftentimes we don't like that we get discouraged and disappointed when these kind of experiences happen in our life but this morning the spirit of God I mean wants to encourage certain people that I mean I mean your way is not closed by the enemy this morning some of your ways is not closed by other people around you I mean there is a hand of God that is moving behind that why I mean because he wants to redirect you. He want to redirect your path. He want to redirect your destiny. I think of the example in the Old Testament. We know the story of the prophet Balaam. Uh, Balaam was an Old Testament prophet. We see Numbers 22. And the Bible says uh, he was a person that uh, lived, he was a prophet of God, but he had a, a loose life, a compromised life, right? And when he was asked to do something, he prayed to God about it, and God said, don't do that. And then again, he's praying to God, Lord, let me do that. Then God says, no. Don't do that. And then again, he's praying, God, please let me go. Please let me go. So when we look at the life of Balaam, we see that even though he's a man of God, even though he hears the voice of God, uh, he has a lack of commitment towards God. And the lack of commitment leads to a life of compromise. When we are not fully committed to God, that's when we find it hard to obey his word. When we are not fully committed to God, that's when we are reluctant to obey Him. 
Some people are so reluctant, I mean, to take water baptism. Some people are so reluctant, I mean, to, I mean, to live according to what the Bible teaches. Why? Because it, they, they like God. They want God to heal them. They want God to provide for them. They want God to bless them. But they are not committed to God. Praise God. When I am committed to God, that's when I'm willing to change my life for God. When I am committed to God, that's when I'm willing to let go of certain things to follow Him. When I am committed to God, that's when I am able to make His word, His will, His plan my number one priority. This morning, God wants to remind us, I may stay committed to God. God is not just a person Amen. that's there to bless you and give you everything in your life. Amen. This morning, God wants a commitment from your part. Can you make a commitment this morning? Amen. I am going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ with all of my heart, all of my strength, all that is with me. I am going to make a commitment to live by the word of God. I am going to make a commitment to live a holy life, pleasing and acceptable to God. Praise God. So Balaam didn't have this commitment. And he was so insistent to do something that was not pleasing to God. And the Bible says in Numbers 22, verse 22, I mean, the angel of the Lord came down and stood before him and blocked his path. He blocked his path. And God said, ah, this is not my will concerning you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I mean, this morning, I just touched on that example. I'm not leaving the, I haven't forgotten the message. I just touched on that example because in my spirit I feel led to tell some people this morning, I mean God these days, I mean is closing certain doors in our future, certain doors of opportunity that we think is a blessing that we would like to go through but God is closing that, why? Because he has a different plan concerning us, he has a different plan concerning our family, he has a different plan concerning our church I mean thank God for the ways he closed in front of me. Praise God. Thank God. Amen. He closed the doors in front of me. Amen. It is not because he's angry with me. It is not God's punishment towards me. But this morning, God's Holy Spirit wants to, amen, change the way you look at it and say, yes, this is God's expression of his love towards me. Amen. He disciplines those he loves. Thank God for the time that God closed that admission in front of me. Thank Thank God that God closed that way in front of me. Amen. It is because of that that I, you and I are here today, this morning, to worship the Lord in truth and spirit. Praise God. Amen. Don't be disappointed. Don't be discouraged. Don't be, amen, so distressed. Understand if God, amen, has closed the way in front of you, he is opening something better, something much more beautiful for your life, for your future, for your academics, for your career, for your your ministry. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, book of Hosea chapter 2, God starts off by saying, I am going to block the way. And then I'm going to redirect them. I'm going to redirect them. Where is God redirecting? <coughs> Where is God redirecting them? God is redirecting them into the wilderness. Oh, this is a, another difficult thing for us because none of us like to go in the wilderness, right? Wilderness is a dry experience. It is a very lonely experience. It is a very difficult experience in our life. But understand, child of God, in our Christian walk, there are times when we have to go through a wilderness experience. Praise God. Whether that be in our personal life, our family life, or whether in regards to our ministry, there are certain seasons that God takes us through the wilderness. Christian life without a wilderness is not a Christian life at all. God never promises us a, a, such a smooth life from beginning to end until we get to heaven. No, no, no. There are challenges that is in front of us. There are certain struggles that we will end up going through. There are certain um, dry times in our life that we are going through. So then the question comes, why is God doing that? Why is God doing that? Amen. 
Praise Lord. That's what I want to speak to you this, this morning from. The God of the wilderness. The God of the wilderness. Three things that we read in this passage. I read the verse again. Therefore, behold, I will allure her. Will bring her into the wilderness. There I will speak comfort to her. I will give her the vineyards from there. Praise God. Three things that I want to mention from you. Number one, he's a God who has a comes down in the wilderness. His divine presence comes down in the wilderness. Number two, he's a God who divinely speaks to us in the wilderness. Number three, he's a God who divinely provides for us in the wilderness. Three things I want to talk to you. Divine presence, divine voice, divine provision in the wilderness of our lives. So you may ask, Andrew, uh, has God done like this before in the past? Has God ever done this uh, like this before? Let's turn to one scripture portion. I want to touch from an Old Testament scripture and show to you that surely God is a God of the wilderness. When we turn to the book of Genesis chapter number 21, praise God. Genesis chapter 21 verse 8 onwards, we see a young lady there by the name of Hagar. The Bible says Hagar was a servant in the house of Abraham. And she struggled there and lived there for so many years. And finally, the Bible says it got to a point where she could not live there peacefully any longer. And the Bible says Abraham and Sarah uh, told her to leave from there. Leave from there. And it, I find one thing very interesting there. It says that Abraham gave a morsel of bread and uh, and a skin of water verse number 14 genesis 21 verse 14 abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and putting it on her shoulder he gave it and the boy to hagar and sent her away praise god one thing i just want to point out very quickly since we touched on that is this bible says abraham was a very blessed man Okay, materially, he was so blessed. In fact, uh, most theologians call him the millionaire in the Old Testament. He had so many riches, so many livestock, so many, uh, so much things in his possession. But when it came time to send uh, the servant who worked faithfully in his house for that many years, uh, what is the Bible? He gave a piece of bread and some water. Sometimes our giving is like that too. We have a lot, but we don't give a lot. Praise God. I mean, this is what I want to encourage you, especially since we are in this uh, holiday season. Uh, we should have a willingness to give. Praise God. Most importantly, I may give to your pastor. Give to your other men of God, women of God, who are ser faithfully serving in the kingdom of God. Give and support, amen, people who are ministering uh, in different parts of remote areas of India, North India, and different places like that. You know, many servants of God are really struggling, amen, during this corona time. If God has blessed us, amen, we surely have a responsibility to make sure that our giving is a blessing and an encouragement for others. So don't give like Abraham. Abraham is an example in so many ways, but in giving, he's not an example. Praise God. We should give with a cheerful heart and be willing to give abundantly, just as God has given us. Amen. We should be willing to give, not just financially. Amen. Our time. We should be willing to give our time for the church when the church has different activities, right? Amen. Different events. Amen. People need to help out, right? It's not just a pastor and pastor's family that's supposed to do all these things, right? Uh, so giving, we, our willingness to give our time for the church, I mean, it's important. Our willingness to give our resources for other people, I mean, if God has put us in a certain position in our workplace and, or in our city, in a, in a, in a different certain environments, uh, if we can use that place to be a beneficial for others, a blessing for others, a help for others, I mean, God expects that. So, I mean, this morning, uh, God's Holy Spirit works in the I mean, be be a cheerful giver in, in your finances, in your time, in your health, in your resources. I mean, be willing to give unto the Lord. So Abraham didn't do that, but he sent Hagar in this manner. Now, 
Don't forget our message. I'm touching on different things because the Spirit of God is just, I'm pointing me in that those, those kind of different directions. But our message is what? God in the wilderness. And we see Hagar is now journeying in the wilderness of Bathsheba. Hagar is now struggling because she runs out of water and now she doesn't know what to do. And the Bible says Hagar did not want to see the death of her child. And so uh, he, he, she left the child there and went away from there. And then the Bible says, Amen. Verse 17 on to, onwards, that God heard the voice. Then the angel of God called out to Hagar and came down there. The angel of God. The angel of God. I mean, one of the things that we, when we study the Old Testament, we see angel of God. We see this term over and over again in the angel of God. But uh, one of the things that uh, when we study the scripture, we realize that Many times when the angel of God appears, it's not really an ordinary angel. It's not an ordinary angel. I mean, even though it looks like an angel, we see from the scriptures, uh, it's not really an angel. How do we know that? Because, see, when an angel of God appears before someone, they do not speak anything on their own. They always say what? The Lord God says to you, the Lord will bless you. The Lord will do this for you. The Lord told me to tell you. Right? That's what an angel does. But look at what this angel says. Verse 18. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him with your hand. For I will make him a great nation. Not the Lord will make him a great nation. What does he say? I will make him a great nation. So who is this angel? Who is this angel? In fact, this same angel, Amen, appeared to Hagar one time before while she was in the wilderness. And then she made a statement like this, have I seen the one who sees me? Why? Why did she say that? Because even though the outside it looks like an angel, yes, it's glowing like an angel, but when I hear the voice, this is not the voice of an ordinary angel. This is the voice of the one who sees me. This is the voice of the one who knows me. Amen. If that is the case, amen, I truly believe from the evidence of scripture, the one who came down in the wilderness was not an ordinary angel, it was Jesus Christ himself the person second in the tri triune God Amen. praise God what is the first point we made there is a God who comes down when you are in the wilderness a divine presence that comes down for us when we are in the wilderness Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. He's not a God who leaves us alone there. He's not a God who abandons us there. He's not a God who walks away from us there. Oh, in our dry experience, in our lonely experiences, when we have no one else around us to see us, to look at us, to help us. Oh, child of God, this morning the word of God is very clear. There is a divine presence that comes down for you. Oh, Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm in a divine person who come down. And what does that God say to her? What does that God say to her? Lift up the lad and hold him in your hand. For I will make him a great nation. What was point number two? Not just a divine presence that comes down for us in the wilderness. I'm in a divine voice. That speaks to us in the wilderness. Child of God, I mean, your God is not a God. Why I'm saying all this, your God is not a God of statues. It's not a God made of some stone or sticks. Amen. This morning, we need to understand we serve a living God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Other gods have mouths, but they cannot speak. They have ears, but cannot hear. But our God, Amen. He's from the, even from the throne of heaven. Amen. He can speak the word of comfort, the word of encouragement, the word of blessing, the word of deliverance in your life. Praise God. Amen. I made me think, even if there's no one else in this world, I meant to speak one good thing about us. Even though there may be no one else in this world to say one word of encouragement for us, one word of hope for us, one word of, that's okay, brother, that's okay, sister. Nothing to even console us in our, in our, in our trials times. 
This morning, God's Holy Spirit is reminding you <laughs> to comfort you, to strengthen you, to encourage you. There is one in heaven who is willing to speak to you this morning. He's willing to speak to you this morning. Amen. To speak to you individually. To speak to you personally. Oh, praise God. Amen. This morning I need one word from the mouth of God. I did not come this Sunday morning to hear Amen the voice of any person. Oh, praise God. I did not come this Sunday morning to hear the words of any other believers or any other pastors or men of God or women of God. Amen. This morning I want to hear the voice of the almighty God in my life. I'm in one word from the mouth of God. Oh, that's what I need this morning to move forward. I'm in the disciples in the stormy sea. I'm in, didn't know what to do. Didn't know how to, how to move forward. But there the Lord Jesus said one word, peace, be still. It that one word, the storms and the raging wind, I'm in, came to an end. If that is the case, I'm in this morning, I'm in God, one word over my life. One word over my situation. One word over my family. Amen. God, speak the word over my life. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. This morning, amen. The doctors may have so many things to say to you. Amen. The doctors looking at their test results may have so many things to say to you. Amen. They can say so many diagnoses. But one word from the mouth of God, yes, Amen can heal you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. What medical science cannot do, where they are limited in their ability, this morning the mouth of God, out of our Shambhara, one word from the mouth of God, Amen can give you the healing that you need from your body. Yes, Amen, Amen, believe it this morning, believe it this morning. We are not speaking any human words this morning. We are speaking the word of God. One word from the mouth of God. Amen has the ability to bring you deliverance in your life. One word from the mouth of God has the ability to give you the breakthrough you need in your situation, in your ministry. Oh yes, one word from the mouth of God. Amen will transform the situation. Oh, it is this Jesus who came in front of the tomb of Lazarus and he said, one word Lazarus, come out what is dead, what is gone, what you think is, amen, can no more live, what you gave up in, amen, this morning the word of God has the power to bring that back to life, this morning the word of God has the power, amen, to revive that again, this morning, amen, everything is hopeless, but one word from the mouth of God brings back the whole, oh, yes, as we heard this morning from the south, amen, we have an endless hope, why, because our God has not stopped speaking, his word is still true. He's, there is still power in the word of the Lord. There is still healing in the word of the Lord. There is still breakthrough in the word of the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Amen, amen. Just begin to cry out right where you are. Say, Lord, speak the word. Speak the word over my life. One word, one word, one word, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. The God of the wilderness, right? The God who came down with the divine presence. The God who spoke with the divine voice. Third thing, a God who provides divine provisions. Look at what he did in the life of Hagar. Bible says God opened the eyes of Hagar and she saw the well that was in front of her. And the Bible says she drank from that well and was strengthened. Let me ask you a question. When did this well come there? Praise God. Did God create the well at that moment? Did God say, okay, let the well come there? No, 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 no. Bible says the well was already there. Bible says the well was already there. But God had to open Hagar's eyes to what? See the well. In my imagination, I believe like this. Back in Genesis 1.1, when God is creating the heaven and earth, 
in the blueprint amen of God the earth God said okay this particular point here I need to put a well I need to put a well and angels may have asked hey God why are you putting a well there <laughs> there is nobody going to live there there is nobody there in that area there is no city there there is no town there why you have to put a well there oh but then God will say like this amen not today not tomorrow but one day amen Amen. A young lady will come very thirsty and weak at this very point for her to drink, for her to get strength, for her to get revived. Amen. I am going to place a well here for her. Amen. What is the point I'm trying to make here, child of God? Amen. There are certain things God has already prepared for us. Amen. How many of you believe that? Amen. This Corona season, this year, Amen. Many things came as a surprise surprise to us. Many things came as a shock to us. But I mean, nothing is a surprise in the plan of God. I mean, I believe. I mean, there are already things God has in store for us. I mean, God knowing our need before we know what our need is. God knowing what is the area we are going to struggle in even before we go through that situation. God already provides for his people. Hallelujah. Oh, look at Abraham coming up the Mount of Moriah. Amen. He has to sacrifice his son. But even before Abraham climbs up the mountain, God already put a ram in there what? as a substitution, as a provision for his sacrifice. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's a God who provides for you even before you recognize your need. Ha, let me put it this way. Even before you open your mouth for the first time and ask God for your need, God already has certain provisions in store for you. How many of us believe that this morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't believe God predestines everything about our life before us. I don't believe in that theology, but I believe one thing. Amen. Definitely, definitely. Amen. There is a God. Amen. Who amen, knows how to provide for me even before. Amen. I am in the point of my need. Praise God. Divine presence. Divine voice. Divine provision. That is the God I serve, the God in the wilderness. Now look at one thing. I have told you, I speak about the spiritual side of things. So when I talk about the provision of God, uh, many times we think, uh, oh, God is going to provide the visa or the green card or the job situation or the healing or the admission. All these things is what we think when we think about God's divine provision, which is all good. I'm not saying not to pray for those things or not to desire those things in our life here on earth. We need all those things. But I told you, in our spiritual life, the provision that God has for us is not any of these things. What is the provision that God has for us? Let's turn our attention to the Gospel of John, chapter number 7, verse 37. Gospel of John, chapter number 7, verse 37. What has God provided for us when we are thirsty, when we are weak, when we are tired? <coughs> It says there, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out and said, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So Jesus is giving a word of comfort, saying, when you are thirsty in your spiritual life, when you are going through your wilderness experience, when you are all alone and weak and have no strength to move forward, what is Jesus saying? Come to me. Come to me all who thirst. And then he says there an explanation. He spoke concerning, verse 39. He spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive for the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. Okay, I want to touch on this topic here. Bible says Jesus was talking about what? Receiving the Holy Spirit. Okay, so from that we understand one thing is clear. When we are thirsting, 
when we are going through a dry season in life, when we are going through a wilderness experience, the provision that God has for his people is what? The Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that God wants us to drink from and get the strength we need to continue in our wilderness. Now, many people <clears throat> look at this verse and say, Oh, this is talking about the Holy Spirit that we receive uh, when we accept Jesus Christ as our, whole, as our Savior. When we accept Jesus Christ, Spirit of God comes in us and we have the Holy Spirit. But that's not what the Bible is talking about here. It clearly says the Holy Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus was not yet glorified. So, we are not talking about when Jesus prayed for his disciples to receive the Holy Spirit. We are talking about something regarding the Holy Spirit that happened after Jesus was glorified, after Jesus was ascended up to heaven. Okay, what is that? When we look in the scriptures, we see Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. And on the third day, Bible says he was buried, and on the third day, he was resurrected from the grave. So he was resurrected, but he was not glorified at that point. Understand that clear distinction. Then the Bible says he taught the disciples the things concerning the kingdom of God for 40 days. So he was resurrected, he taught them the scriptures, and then the Bible says in the book of Acts, uh, and also in the Gospels, then on the Mount of Olives, he was then what? Ascended up, glorified up to the Father and sat at the right hand of the Father. After that, Bible says the disciples went into the upper room, locked themselves in, and what waited for power to come from on high. And the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 that on the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God came down like a mighty rushing wind. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Each one began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave honor. So look at that. Amen. What God was provisioning for the people who are going through a wilderness. Amen. Jesus was the biggest teacher. He was the greatest teacher. But Jesus did not say, if you are thirsty, if you are, if you are dry, come to me. I will give you one our Bible study. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus was the greatest preacher who ever lived. But Jesus did not say, if you are thirsty and dry, come to me. I will preach to you one hour message. Bible says Jesus prayed all night long. But Jesus did not say, if you are thirsty and dry, come to me. I will pray for you. That's not what Jesus said. Oh, Jesus being the fullness of God's glory and worship. Amen. Jesus did not say, Amen, come to me. We will sing some songs and worship together. Jesus said, I have a provision for you. That is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. God's provision for us who are in the wilderness is the outpouring of his Holy Spirit on us. Amen. Now, some people say, you know, Andrew, when we speak in tongues, prophesy, heal, cast out demons, all these things, uh, it's good to read about, but we don't really want to put too much emphasis on that because that might scare people away. That might uh, turn off some people. That might, uh, you know, make some people think we are weird and not, show, not come to our services. I don't know what Bible that is because my Bible says when they spoke in tongues, 3,000 people were added in the church that day. My Bible says when they lay their hands on the sick, many believed upon the Lord and were saved. My Bible says when they saw them prophesy, and many gave their hearts to the Lord. What I'm trying to say is this. I mean, why do we need to be reluctant about what God has provided for his church. Why do we need to be so hesitant about what God said I will give to you in your wilderness time? 
This morning when I was praying for this church, that is exactly the word of the Lord that God gave in my heart, which is, Amen, drink from the water which I have given you. Drink from the source which I have opened for you. Amen. God could only open the eyes of Hagar. But God could not make Hagar drink. God did not open Hagar's mouth and pour the water in her mouth. No, 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 no. God opened her eyes. But it was her choice whether or not she needed to drink from that. This morning, Amen, the word of God is opening some of your eyes to recognize you need the Holy Spirit. Your wilderness journey is not going to continue further unless you get a strength, a divine strength, a divine power from the Holy Spirit but I or anyone else cannot make you receive the Holy Spirit this night you need to have a desire this year morning you need to have a desire a willingness to drink from that source praise God praise God I look at it like this Jesus Christ Amen emphasized the Holy Spirit during his time on this earth. In the New Testament we see, Amen, Peter and John emphasized the filling of the Holy Spirit while they ministered. In fact, the Bible says when the Samaritans believed and were baptized, the Bible says they specifically called Peter and John to come down and pray for, lay hands and pray for them. And it says, for they had not yet received the Holy Spirit. They were born again, they were baptized, but they had not received the Holy Spirit. And Peter and John, John Journey days for what? Just so those people could receive the Holy Spirit. Apostle Paul, when he comes to Ephesus, he did not ask them, I'm an old boy and saved and baptized and attending a church. He asked, have you received the Holy Spirit? So my question is, if Jesus Christ put emphasis on it, if Peter and John put emphasis on it, if Apostle Paul put emphasis on it, who are we to say not to put an emphasis on it? Praise God. Hallelujah. This morning, God wants to encourage the church this morning. Drink from the source which I have provided for you. Drink from the source which I have already given to you. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible says the well was open. The well was open. And even thousands of years later, that well has not dried up. Praise God. Even today, there is a source for you to drink from this morning. Even today, there is a place for you to get strength from this morning. Even today, in your I'm in driest and weakest point in your life, there is a place for you to find hope, to find encouragement, to find strength, to move forward in your journey. Praise God. Drink from the source. Let life begin to flow in your church this morning. Ha, hallelujah. Let that dryness amen, leave this morning. Let the Spirit of God begin to move this morning in a unique way. Praise God. I mean, the Spirit of God cannot make mistakes. Spirit of God will not lead you down a wrong path. Spirit of God will not I mean, destroy your church. Bible says the Spirit of God I mean, provides strength for the weary, hope for the hopeless, and it builds up the people of God, it builds up the church and leads the people of God towards his divine destiny. It leads the church towards his divine plan. Praise God. So why is God sending you through the wilderness? It's because God wants you to experience this provision that he has for you. Amen. I'm going to conclude very soon. Why does God want you to go through the wilderness? Amen. It's because God wants you to realize you cannot continue this wilderness on your own. You cannot continue this journey with your own strength. You cannot continue this journey simply by knowing so many theological things. Amen. Bible knowledge is not going to get you through. You need a power from on high. 
Praise God. Amen. I know very clearly in my heart. Amen. The Spirit of God is discerning individuals in this church. Why are you reluctant for that which I have given to you? Why are you hesitant to drink from that which I have given to you to drink from? This morning, Amen. Open your hearts, open your mouth, and cry out to God and say, God, let me drink of that fountain this morning. Let me drink of that well this morning. Let me taste the rivers of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. There is a well that does not run dry. It is the well of the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. When we come to the book of Hosea chapter 2, the Bible says, after the divine presence, after the divine voice, after the divine provision from God, Amen. Bible says Hosea, in the book of Hosea, oh, she will sing in the days of her youth, as like the day she sang when she came out of Egypt. What is point number four? After the divine presence, after the divine voice, after the divine provisions from God, then what we see? A divine worship from the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. We sing the Amen. A divine worship from God. Why are they worshiping God? Is it because God pulled them out of the wilderness? No. Is it because God changed their wilderness into a Amen fruitful garden? No, 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 no. Yes, they are in the wilderness. It is true. Yes, they are in a dry season. That is true. Yes, Amen. They are lonely. It is true. But there is a God who came down in my wilderness. There is a God. God who spoke to me in my wilderness. There is a God who provided me the Holy Spirit and the strength I needed in my wilderness. When I think of that God, oh, I cannot help but open my mouth and praise Him this morning. When I think of that God and what He has done, oh, my heart is filled with thanksgiving and gratitude. Oh, praise God. Praise God. When you have experienced God in that way, then you don't need someone to tell you to clap your hands. You don't need somebody to tell you to sing along. You don't need somebody to tell you to open your mouth and praise God. The one who has experienced God in the wilderness, huh, without any compulsion, without any force, amen, they will lift their holy hands this morning and begin to worship God. They will begin to open their mouth and begin to worship God. Why? Because there's a God who came down in my wilderness. You may be asking Andrew, Everything you said is good. Everything you said is good. God, it will come down in my wilderness. Okay, fine. God will speak to me. That's good. God will provide me the strength I need to move forward. That's good. Okay. But one last question. How much longer I have to journey in this wilderness? Oh, praise God. That's the question we want an answer to, right? How much longer I have to endure in this wilderness? How much longer I have to struggle like this? This morning, the word of the Lord is very clear to you. Hallelujah. You won't have to continue in this wilderness much longer. Praise God. Do you know why? Because the God who came down in your wilderness, Amen, within a short time, will come down and appear in the clouds. Praise God. Hallelujah. The God who spoke to you in the wilderness and comforted you and encouraged you from the sky will cry out and say, come up here, come up here. With the trumpet sound, he will call your name and say, come up here, brother, sister, my bride, come up here. Oh, the God that provided the strength that you needed in your wilderness journey. Amen, he will be there that he provides you. Amen, an eternal strength. Amen, a new body, a new home. Amen, a new glory. Oh, praise God. My wilderness journey is coming to an end, brothers and sisters. Your wilderness journey is coming to an end. Everything that we see happening around the world, Amen is declaring that one thing. Our wilderness is going to come to an end very soon. The God who came down in our wilderness, Amen is going to appear in the clouds within a short time. Every eye closed. Let's pray in the presence of God. I'm going to conclude my message here. Oh, Amen. This morning, what is the wilderness? 
darkness you are going through. What is the dry season you are going through? Amen. This morning, God's Holy Spirit is telling very clearly, amen, to certain individuals, amen, drink from the source which I have opened for you. Drink from the well which I have already provided for you. Amen. Don't be hesitant. Don't be reluctant. Amen. Even before this year comes to an end, take some time to sit in my presence and taste that water for yourself. Drink up that water for yourself. You will see, amen, the transformation that takes place. You will see the change that takes place in your personal life, in your family life, in your church. Oh, yes, I clearly see that. In the spirit, I see, amen, let the church of God, amen, go through a great revival these days. Amen, let a new life come into the church. Yes, eternal life is not just going to be the name of the church, but let it be the experience of the people in the church. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. Can we just open our mouths and cry out to God and say, Lord, I'm in my wilderness. Lord, come down. Let me taste and experience the waters which you have provided for me. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, don't be reluctant, brother. Amen, brother, don't be so hesitant about it. Amen, don't use your theological arguments. Amen, to justify it. No, 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 just openly admit and say, yes, God, I'm in a weak spot. I'm in a dry spot. Lord, touch me, fill me this morning. Fill me this morning. Let me receive the power, the same power that came on the day of Pentecost. Let it fall on me, Lord, this morning. Let it fall on my children this morning. Let it fall on my church people this morning. Love me, Father, Lord, I pray and bless this church, oh God. Lord, I pray for the individuals who are going through a dry time in their life. Lord, let these be the days where they experience the God of the wilderness. Lord, you come down to in the midst of their situation. You speak to them clearly these days. You provide them, amen, a new strength. A new strength, oh God, for them to continue their journey, Lord. No, they will not fall weak in this journey, oh Lord. They will not fall halfway. They will not go without completing their journey. This morning, oh God, I pray that a new strength, oh God, be empowered upon every individual who heard this message, oh God. Let them run the race, oh God, and complete the journey. Let them reach their destination, oh God. Amen. Let no one, let no one... Amen. Be discouraged this morning, oh God. Let the word of God encourage them and strengthen them this morning. I pray and bless every person in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let this church be blessed, oh God. Let this be the days, oh God, where they see a mighty transformation in the church. Yes, oh Lord. Amen. From every aspect of the church, by the time they enter into 2021, let it be a new church, oh God, a new worship, a new way of praying a new ministering of the word of God. Let it be completely transformed. Let new souls enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. From different parts of India. Amen. People coming on visa. Amen. People coming. Amen. For, amen. Specifically for their job. But even such people, oh Lord, damn it, let them come into the house of God. Let them find comfort in the house of God. Let them find life in the house of God. Let them find strength in the house of God. I pray, O oh Lord, you use their church, O oh Lord, as a beacon of light. Amen. To be a blessing to many others, O oh Lord. Thank you for speaking us through your word, Lord. Bless every person, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you all.